man. If Kenny, what Kenny Ellis is saying is true, Shakur Stevenson, you on the clock, homeboy. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video. Catch me live Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday night at 7.30. I'm also live every Sunday morning with KQKC Boxing Network at 9 a.m. Central Time. I ask that you join the channel as a member. Drop super chats and super thanks when you come by the live streams, the videos that we do. And hit me up if you want to debate. Knockoutboxing86 at yahoo.com is the email address. Um, or you can just come by the channel when I'm live. We can debate right then and there. Let's get it cracking, though. Look, bro. So, Shakur Stevens. Javante Tank Davis. Javante Tank Davis. Shakur Stevenson. The fight we want on this channel, bro. It's the fight that we push it for the hardest. Um, I think it would be great for the sport of boxing if we're able to get them two in the ring together. And it's looking like Tank Side is trying to make that shit happen. Now, Kenny Ellis said when Lomachenko first ducked Tank Davis, he said, look, Loma ducks. Let's see if Shakur Stevenson duck." And that was reported widely by um, sources that he said that. Obviously, you can go hear him say it on the interview himself. Um... But also on Twitter, guys like Michael Benson, Mike Coppinger, um, and others were reporting it as well and kind of quoting, putting his quotes out there for everybody to see in case they didn't see him, him say it. Well, Kenny Ellis came back yesterday and doubled down on that by quoting Mike, uh, Co Mike Benson's post with a saying, let's see, and then dropped the, the, uh, the signature emoji saying, let's see if he ducked. Sign, you know what I mean? Telling Shakur Stevenson to sign. Now, that's a bold claim. That's a bold claim. And I need somebody to either refute that from Shakur Stevenson's side or flat out sign that motherfucker. <laughs> sign it. Now, this was done days ago. And I'm going to tell you why I give credence to this. All right? I'm going to tell you why I give credence to, to what Kenny Ellis is saying. It's because I heard the same thing. And I told y'all this last week. I told y'all, Tank Davis is pushing heavy for the Shakur fight. Premier boxing champions will prefer him to go with the pit bull route because it's an in-house fight and they want to, um, they think that it's a bigger fight. They think pit bull could be bigger than Shakur Stevenson because of the Mexican fan base. But Tank Davis got his list. He been checking it twice. Like Santa Claus, and he want to give out an ass whooping to Shakur Stevenson. He ain't interested in moving up to 140 right now. He want to handle his business at 135, and then go up to 140. So that's what I've been telling y'all, because that's what I was told. What Kenny Ellis is saying is supporting what I've been telling y'all, because at the end of the day, Al Heyman is gonna do what all the fighters say is he's gonna do what the fighter wants him to do. And if Tank Davis is dead set on that fight, he going to try to make it happen for him. And based on what Kenny Ellis is saying, that's what it looks like. Now, a couple of things about this, though, because you got you to gotta be you gotta be real and you got to be honest. Kenny Ellis is not in the business discussions for Javante Tank Davis, meaning he don't negotiate any deals. Right? He don't have a say on who Tank fight and who Tank don't fight. Um, however... He wouldn't know who they going after. He wouldn't know who they going after. And until somebody from Shakur's side refutes this, I'm, I'm going to say that Kenny Ellis is telling the truth because I don't think he lied about anything like this. And I'm a good judge of character. I've never seen him say they sent contracts to somebody. Shit, I don't know if I've ever seen him say that. I definitely haven't seen him say that and then it not be true. And he told Shakur Stevenson to his face that he wanted to fight. And he was asking Shakur Stevenson certain questions and shit when they were both on for none. That leads me to believe he wouldn't be doing that shit unless he had Javante Tank Davis's blessing. But we'll see if he lying or not. Because here's one thing I know, and this is why I pay attention to people's behavior when it comes to this shit. Because if Kenny Ellis was lying... I need Shakur Stevenson to come out because Shakur Stevenson clearly saw what Kenny Ellis said because he follows him on Twitter. He follows everything that people say about him. And he's very boisterous on that app. He's very boisterous on that app. So if you didn't get a contract, if they haven't sent you an offer, if you're not negotiating, then it's on you 
to call Kenny Ellis out for capping. To let the people know, like, I ain't got no contract. I don't know what the fuck they talking about. So until you come out and say anything, then we're going we gonna to ride with it because you don't get to come out and say everything about something else. And now this is the biggest fight. This is the, the, the most lucrative fight. This is your biggest legacy fight. And the other side is claiming you got a contract and you get to just be quiet now. Unless you really got a contract. If he got a contract, then he should be quiet if he's trying to negotiate. But if Kenny Ellis is lying on him, he got to come out and let the world know he lying on him like he would anybody else, bro. Anybody else. And that is why when you use, when you break this shit down and you use logic and you use common sense, that is why I'm, I believe this shit, bro. Because Shakur Stevenson is too boisterous and too loud and too talkative on Twitter. For him to just let this shit go by and now all of a sudden get quiet if it ain't true. If Kenny Ellis is lying on him and he ain't got no contract and he ain't got no offer on the table, then he need to say something. I will say this too. Whatever it is, Shakur Stevenson should take that shit because I know it's going to be his highest payday because everybody get their highest payday against Tank. And it's most definitely his biggest opportunity um, to become a superstar and his biggest opportunity to prove to the world who he is. You perform good against Javante Tank Davis. Everything negative people said about you goes away. Look at your big bro. Look at your big bro, Terrence Crawford. All of the negative shit that people said about him in the ring, right? All the negative shit that I said about him in the ring. We had to eat that shit. <laughs> we had to eat that shit because of what he did to Earl Spence, bro. You can make people eat that shit, bro. All that running shit, all that shit people say about you can't handle a motherfucker with power, you scared of power. Um, you ain't ready yet. Like all that shit, boy. You get to you get to make them all eat their words. Me included, cause I'm in that I'm in that camp. I think Tank Davis dog walk your ass. But it's your biggest opportunity. It's your biggest shot, and you deserve to fight. So go get it. If they sent you an offer, you gotta sign that bitch. And the reason stands for what I said, bro. And I was talking to KQKC earlier. The reason he should take that shit. I don't know if it's six million, five million, uh, five percent back in. 10% back in, 15, whatever it is. The reason he should take that shit because with 20%, 30%, whatever they offering, bro, is because number one, it's his biggest bag and you a prize fighter. But number two, you ain't got no leverage, you ain't got no business to really stand on, bro. You ain't got no business to stand on. And you know, you you ain't what you gonna what you gonna tell them, bro? I deserve this because of my free views. I deserve this because of my live gates. Bro, Shakur Stevenson live gates in his last few fights don't equal up to what Tank Davis did with Frank Martin, bro. Tank Davis and Frank Martin, more sales and pay-per-views in live gates generated more money than Shakur Stevenson's all his fights as a champion, bro. And all his fights and shit put together combined since he's been a headliner, bro. Since he's been headlining cards, you go look at the revenue of those cars and you look at the revenue of the Tank and Frank fight and you tell me Shakur got a leg to stand on. Don't even get me started on Tank and Ryan. Like, bro, it's, it's night and fucking day. So you take the deal and you beat his ass if you can beat his ass. And you know they're going to want a rematch clause. You can beat his ass twice <laughs> for two, two life-changing generational wealth bags. You can do that shit, bro. That's what you should do <laughs> if you can for Javante Tank Davis, I think that he should make an example out of somebody. Meaning this, whether it's Lomachenko or Shakur Stevenson, I hope Shakur Stevenson takes the fight. But I don't think Tank Davis should fight somebody if they don't accept, if they fall out of negotiations one time. He should make an example to where if you don't come get this payday, if you don't fight me the first time I come calling, you'll never get the opportunity again. And he might should do that with Loma. I'm just keeping it real with y'all. If he get this Shakur fight, and he treat Loma, and he do that to Loma to make an example out of guys like Tiafimo Lopez, um, Devin Haney in the future probably, um, and, and, and shit, who else? Gary Antoine Russell, or whoever's going to be. Because you know another big name going to emerge. You know, Ryan Garcia rematch, Isak Pitbull Cruz rematch, whatever he decides to do. He needs to make an example out of Lomachenko or Shakur Stevenson. If Shakur Stevenson ducks too, I, he needs to let it be known that if you pull out a negotiation with me the first time, you'll never get an offer again. We'll never fight. 
to kind of set an example for everybody else. Like, yo, when he come calling, we got to take this shit because he ain't going to give us a fight if we don't take this shit the first time. That's what he needs to do. Because this idea that guys like Lomachenko, guys like Shakur Stevenson should be dictating terms or negotiating or trying to act like they got some sort of leverage that they don't have. Nah, bro. Get that man his respect as the face of boxing. Get that man his respect as getting you your highest payday and being your only route to be on pay-per-view and get any kind of revenue generating money. And fight the man when he come calling, bro. Otherwise, you don't want smoke. And if you're willing to wait till later, Tank Davis should turn later into never, bro. You duck me one time in negotiations, you pull out, I ain't fighting your ass. Good luck to you. Real talk, bro. Just to just to further strengthen his leverage and make sure people don't do what Loma did again. So if Shakur Stevenson pull out, then it is what it is to me. Because you ain't got no business pulling out in the first place. But um if Kenny Ellis is lying, bro, let us know he lying, dog. Let us know he lying. Let us know that he's lying. Cause right now it's looking like you got an offer and you either getting cold feet or you negotiating. I hope it's the latter. I hope it's just negotiating and y'all get this shit done. Cause Tank Davis over there in the Olympics still look like he in shape. Still look like he training. They got great facilities over there for him to train in. And he got his team working to, to deliver us a big time fight, bro. So let's see if Shakur Stevens is signing this shit. Or let's see if he refute what Kenny Ellis saying. We're gonna be following this story closely. But y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Tank Davis, Shakur Stevens. Tank Davis team claim they sent an offer to him. Y'all think they capping or y'all think they telling the truth? I'm going to go with they telling the truth. Because Shakur Stevenson would have been said something by now, bro. But instead, what is he doing? Believe half of what you see. None of what they telling you. Like, what, bro? You, you rapping Jay-Z, Sue Surf? What you doing, bro? You only get one shot. YouTubers be lying and the top line ass YouTubers be lying. Be telling y'all stories for lies and, and all this shit. Well, is Kenny Ellis lying? That's what I want to know. If you got time to talk about YouTubers lying, is Kenny Ellis lying on your name right now by saying you got a contract, bro? Is he lying on your name right now by saying that you got an offer and to sign that motherfucker? Is he lying, bro? Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section, man. Comment below, smash the like, sub to the channel. I'll see y'all soon. Peace.